Hey gang, new microphone. Who dis? It's still me. One thing that I have been meaning to check out for a while now is the Notion dependencies. I've been using the subtasks, but subtasks and dependencies were a couple of features that felt like they were missing for a while and I'm glad to see they've finally fixed it. And it's actually pretty easy to set up. This will be a really short video. It makes me kind of wish that I had done this sooner. So I'm just gonna start from scratch. Follow me along to the uh, Producing Paradise Notion dashboard. We don't have 100 YouTube subscribers yet, so I can't tick this one off. Maybe I will soon. Maybe if you feel like subscribing. I digress. So what I'm gonna do is start an entirely new page and let's just say I'm setting up a project for the first time. New project. It's going to be this time a timeline view. And to select a data source, we're going to start a new database. So you're starting everything from scratch. Um, this is what you get out of the box for a new project with Notion. And as always, I'm just going to give it an emoji because emojis are life. They give you these three cards as a starting point. So in this case, let's just say um, project phase one is the setup. I don't know why that date jumps around, but it does. The next thing we're going to do is say phase two, design the thing. And I don't know why this jumps around yet again. If anyone knows the answer, please tell me. And finally, we're going to call this phase three, implement the designs. Again, why you jump, you drive me bananas. All right, so what you end up with there is phase one, set up, phase two, design, phase three. Oh, why did I use different? That was gonna bug me. Okay, I also like to sort by date whenever I'm setting up a timeline so that, and just bump this table away. So you end up with this nice phase one, then phase two, then phase three sorted by date. Once you have all of these building blocks in place, to add the sub items, you click the three dots at the top and try sub items, sub item parent item, that makes sense to me, I don't need to rename those. And once you've turned that on, I can now go into phase one setup and say, all right, sub item, um, finalize project plan, for example. Um, and then say in phase two, design the thing, maybe one of the sub, sub items here is design round one. And maybe another one is design round two. And then finally, if we shuffle along to phase three, maybe a sub item here is turn the designs into a prototype. This kind of sounds like it could be a website, it could be anything. But the point is you've got phases represented by these top level parent tasks. And then if you toggle them down, you've got subtasks. The reason my subtasks aren't appearing yet is because I haven't given them dates. So it's sometimes helpful to set up uh, all items table view. And here I wanna see everything, no filters. So here I also want to sort by date, ascending, and here I'm going to drop these down and give each of these things some dates. So my project plan, I'm just going to move the assignment to the end and status to the end. So finalizing the project plan, that might be something that I want to have done by the end of this first phase. So we would put that somewhere between the 1st and 28th of Feb, let's say by 28th of Feb. Design round one, well, maybe we need the first week of the project to do that. And design round two, maybe we need the second week of the project to do that. And then turn the designs into a prototype. Maybe that is the thing that's due at the end of the project. Very quick and dirty, but there you see you've got phase one, phase two, phase three. Each of the phases have sub items. And uh, I also sometimes like to build in a view which is tasks without the due date, just as a bit of a catch-all so that if I've got a timeline view and then a tasks without due date, it, due date is empty. This is just a way for me to make sure that I'm not missing anything on the timeline view. So I usually like to have timeline view, 
let's rename that tasks with due date and then tasks without due date due date actually so that we can see all of this let's just call it timeline once you've got all of your tasks phases and subtasks set up now if I toggle here I can kind of see yep this project plan is part of this phase to create a dependency I might want the phases to be dependent on each other so in that case I would want to take this little icon off the phase one setup block and um, click and drag to the phase that it's dependent on I'm going to create a new relation and this is going to be I like to call it dependency rather than blocking it just sounds friendlier and this is dependent on so it's going to say there's a dependency between these things and one is dependent on the other so then if I was to click into this uh, phase one you could then see the dates the dependency is phase two and it's dependent on nothing and then if we went into phase two it's dependent on phase one so it kind of shows there's that relationship between the two you might want to go a level deeper and then have specific tasks that are dependent on each other within a phase so oh I see I've actually done a terrible job here so design round two let's put that at the end of the phase and let's say design round one is dependent uh, sorry design round two dependent on design round one and it means that then if you try to move your dates around and say oh no we're not going to get design round one done until the 15th you then see this red line appears and kind of starts to show you as you have red lines that the dependency doesn't work it sort of maps that there's a problem to be solved so another thing you can do when you're setting up a project with tasks and subtasks is I like to add a property which is a phase or major project and turn it into a checkbox because it means that in my timeline view I can group by phases oh I didn't realize now it puts subtasks with those things interesting in the past when I've done this it has then allowed me to have phases at the top and subtasks at, and tasks at the bottom but not now that they have subtasks mm. another thing that we could do with that is rather than be phase this could be um, contract deliverable but then with that filtered view you can create one that shows, whoops, not assignment. You want to create one where contract deliverable is checked. Interesting, now it shows there's nothing there. Perhaps it doesn't show sub items. Hmm live learning all right <laughs> we're not going to use that one it seems that some of the um, features that you might use for major tasks or parent tasks don't work when you're trying to apply them to subtasks um, which is very interesting to know anyway it's making this video longer ah at least having these um, listed here as contract deliverables in the checkbox might be a way to manage understanding where things are up to. Status is the last one. I guess this is the classic out of the box status, but there is also a status field that comes with some pretty great pre-built to do in progress and complete starting point, but you can add others. So not started. I like to add next up just to kind of show of the things that are to do, what are the next in line versus what are the ones that are further behind. And then in progress, you might have another that is on hold pending. And so if we were going to apply status, it might be that these ones are pending the other phases and this is next up next up and that allows you to add a Kanban tasks by status grouped by that status field 
and then you can choose to either status by the high level to do doing done or um, by the specific option within that so all of these let's say manually we want to have completed at the end not started at the start next up in progress on hold and I like to color things to make it pretty so there we have a new project with some dependencies this way I've got it dependent phase by phase but you could also have tasks dependent on each other as things move around as the progress project progresses you'll see that there are red lines which become problems to solve tasks without due date will catch when you've added something say to the task list like oh I also need to hand over notes share hand over notes and then I'll pop over here and see that that task does not have where the date is empty oh again it doesn't work with subtasks what a joke <laughs> okay <laughs> this is not the video I expected to make but I guess warts and all is still helpful <laughs> then task by status you get the really simple like what's currently in progress next up maybe we've started phase one maybe th these things are on hold etc uh, that's about all I'm gonna say about that the dependencies are super helpful I can see it's in its infancy and there are some quirks about using it to be aware of um, I guess the major one as we've discovered today is that the subtasks don't have the same properties as the parent tasks and so that's a bit of a gotcha if you are creating a project and expecting some of those filters to work as they did before don't be fooled like I was I might have to update and do a round two once I've had a bit more of a play and perhaps as they roll out other features with this but pretty cool that they've got them at all and look forward to seeing how it evolves okay that's all from me for now see you next time